In this video, I will show you how to change your front brake rotors. Today we'll be doing this on a Subaru, but the process is still very similar for all makes and models. We're going to start on the front left rotor. The first step is to jack the car up securely. Look at your owner's manual to find where your jack points are for your vehicle. Always use a jack stand to make sure that your car is secure. I like to leave my jack there as well, just to make sure that the car is secure and will not fall down. Just remove the pole to make sure that you don't trip on it when you're walking around the vehicle. Next we're going to remove the wheel. Now I'm using an impact to loosen these lug nuts. If you don't have an impact, be sure to break these lug nuts loose before you jack up the car. Set the lug nuts and the wheel away in a safe place. And here you can see the bad condition that my rotors are in. You can see a lot of grooves in this rotor and you can tell that the rotor has been thinned down a lot more than it was from the factory. This is why we're changing this rotor. Now the first step will be to remove the caliper. This caliper is in two pieces, the moving piece and then the fixed piece. We're going to take the moving piece off of the caliper first before we remove the fixed piece. There are two bolts on the back that hold this moving piece in place. I believe these are 12 millimeter bolts on this particular caliper. You're going to want to bust these loose. They should be on there pretty snugly, so I use the hammer to help me. Now you may need to use a wrench on this nut here to hold it in place as you get the other nut off. Set your bolts in a parts tray to make sure that you don't lose them. Once both bolts are off, you should be able to wiggle this part off of the caliper. Be sure to set this aside without putting any strain on the brake line. Now you should be able to remove the brake pads fairly easily. I will be reusing these brake pads as you'll notice there isn't too much damage to them and they still have a lot of thickness left on them. These are Hawk performance pads and they're quite expensive so I'd rather not purchase another pair. However, it's very common to change out your brake pads when you change the rotors. In fact, I would recommend it. Don't forget to remove the rear brake pad as well. We will now remove the fixed piece of the caliper. This is held on by two bolts as well, but these are much larger bolts. I believe they're 17 millimeter in my case. Once you've removed both bolts, this should come out very easily. You now have direct access to the rotor and it should come off very easily as well. I've now cut to the right side of the vehicle. This rotor did not come off as easily as the other side, so I had to use this pulley puller to pull the rotor off of the spindle. Do not use a hammer on this rotor if you plan to reuse the rotor as it can warp it very easily. You may have two screws in this rotor that are holding it onto the spindle. Those screws need to be removed before you can pull the rotor off. I'm using those screw holes to put this pulley puller on to get the rotor off of the spindle. Once you get your new rotor out of the package, you're going to want to spray it with brake parts cleaner. This is to remove any of the grease and film that they put on the rotor to prevent it from rusting. This is not good for your brake system, so make sure that you wipe this off before installing on your car. The install process for this is very similar to how we've removed it. We're going to do everything in the reverse step order. Put the rotor on, and then put the fixed piece of the caliper on second. You're going to want to tighten those two screws in the back very tightly, but not too tightly that you strip out the bolts. Tighten these about as strong as you can with the wrench without using the hammer. This next step is a little different. You're going to want to open your hood and remove the brake fluid cap off of the brake fluid reservoir. This is because we're going to be compressing the brake caliper. Because the new rotors are thicker than the old rotors, we need to compress the brake caliper so that the brakes will fit over the rotor. We can do this by using a standard C-clamp to compress the calipers. Be very careful not to damage the dust boots around these calipers or any of the surrounding items, including the brake line. Before doing this, you're going to want to check online to make sure that your brake calipers compress as simply as these do. There are some brake calipers that need to twist as they're being compressed. If this is the type of caliper that is on your car, make sure to buy the special tool or rent it from your local parts store. We can now reinstall the brake pads. If your brakes were squeaky before, now is a good time to fix that. Buy some grease at your local parts store to place on the back side of your brake pads. This will reduce the squeaking noise that it makes. Next, we will reinstall the moving part of the brake caliper. Now, this should slide on easily to your brake pads, and if it doesn't, make sure to compress your brake caliper a little bit more. Do not force this. When you're sliding this on, make sure it fits behind the bolts on the fixed part of the caliper. Those two bolts on the fixed part of the caliper do move in and out so you might need to compress them a little bit before you can get the caliper onto the back part of the fixed part of the caliper. Make sure to tighten these two bolts as tight as you can with the ratchet as well without using the hammer. Now we can reinstall the wheel. Make sure to put the lugs in by hand and do not use an impact wrench as you can strip out the lugs very easily. 
You're going to put this on in a star pattern, which means that you're going to go across from each other to make sure that the wheel goes on evenly against the rotor. It's very easy to warp the rotor if you put this on incorrectly. Make sure to get these lugs on with a ratchet just to make sure that the wheel isn't loose when you're setting the car on the ground. We will torque these down a little bit more once the car is back on the ground. We can now safely remove the jack stand and lower the car back onto the ground. Check your owner's manual to make sure what torque rating to tighten your lug nuts at. This is typically between 80 and 100 foot-pounds. I'm going to put mine at about 95 just to be safe. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can use your standard ratchet or lug wrench. Just make sure that they're on there very tightly. I'm going to put a time lapse on this other side so you can just watch me do it very quickly. Whenever you're doing anything with your brakes, you want to make sure that you do them in pairs. So if you change your brake pads on one side, make sure that you change them on the other side as well. This goes the same for rotors. However, you can change your front brakes without changing your rear brakes, as long as they're even from left to right. Now don't forget to put your brake fluid cap back onto the brake fluid reservoir. Now turn your car on and pump your brake pedal a few times. It should go all the way to the floor, as you still need to put brake fluid back into the lines until your calipers are pushed up against your rotors. Do this as many times as it takes until your pedal is firm. Now take your car out for a test drive to beat in those brakes. If you've changed just the rotors or just the pads, it may take a while until your brakes are fully grabbing to the extent that they were before. 